Having used Obsidian for over two years now, the graph view, even though it looks great and the local graph view again can be really cool to look at, I haven't found a consistent use for it. The canvas on the other hand is a completely different story. I'm gonna cover five of my most used use cases for canvas, but as I go through, you may see how some of the features or functionalities of other plugins with canvas can actually give you some inspiration into your own uses. Looking at the community plugins, I'm not gonna show you how to set all of these up inside of the settings, but there is a link in the description to the template for you to play around in. The data view community plugin and metadata menu community plugin being the ones I use the most. And that's what you can see in this homepage dashboard so this is very similar to what I have in my current setup. I did a mid review video, which I'll link in the top right, but I have one file. You can see it's a homepage query file, which is this one right here, which has different headings to show me which queries are which. So article projects, article ideas, etc., all the way down. So I've brought the file in. I've then added the homepage canvas, right click, narrow to heading, and then selected the heading that I wanted to use. By clicking on a card and then zooming in, I can see exactly what's going on. So these are article projects of a medium priority, and then the status is edit and outline. I can left click on the file and it would take me to the file, or I can control left click and then it opens it up as a new tab, so I can then actually go back to the homepage and open them up as split screens. And the reason this is useful is because in a file, I'd have to scroll down, up and down to see all of the queries, but here I can see a three by three grid of my active article projects, my video projects and research projects, all at the top, then I have the ideas, and then I have all of those completed projects, so an activism being a completed research file. And these are inside colored groups, so if you right click inside of a canvas, you can add a card, add a note from Vault, all these options which are actually down at the bottom, but the one that I use is create group, and you can see it's now added an untitled group, you can rename the group, new group, and when a file card, like any of these three, are inside of a group, you can move the entire group and the cards will move with it. Those of you with keen eyes will notice that there's different types of icons next to the files, and that's because of the different class that I have in them. So this is a video, this is a video project. So I click on the video icon, and now I've got a status, record. This is a select property, so it could be idea, script, edit, record, or done. So if I was to move this from the record status to the done status, you can see the status is now done, is disappeared from this view and has come down to the completed view. And that's all happened from the canvas view. You can't do anything like this with the graph view. And trying to do this all inside of a file is there's a lot of scrolling up and down or using the outline, which is a bit of a pain. So that's the pain point this canvas solves for me. Let's move the third video, say the priority is actually low, but let's go to status and say I'm editing this. So it's going to disappear from the complete section and come up to the active videos. And because of the way I've sorted the data view query, it's actually appearing above the first video. So this gives me an option to narrow down to specific headings. And you can see on the right hand side what I've done because of the way that the file is created, I have the complete heading as a heading one, articles, video and research as heading two. So down here, we have just the heading twos, but over on the right, we have the heading one and everything underneath. So you can show as much or as little as you want inside of the canvas. Use case two is for my library. I did a recent video explaining how I did that. I'll leave that in the top right. But here, it looks a little bit different because it's a different configuration of groups and different cards inside of this canvas because it's fully flexible. So I can come over to my ribbon and say, create new book. Once I've searched for the book, I can then add it. It will add it as a new file. So that's all the information I want. There's the file. And when I come back to the canvas, you can see at the top, we have another data view query and it's saying, hey, conscious coaching, this is a book that you've added in Obsidian, but it's currently not in the canvas. So I'm going to drag a card in. There it is. I've now added the book to the to read section. It will disappear from the query because I've now added it. And the status is to read. I can then add it to the reading section to the queued section and these blue groups are priority. So if I was to go into this book, you can see the status is queued and the priority is low. The status is queued because it's a yellow and the priority is low because it's blue. So if I move this over to the reading, this is now going to change to reading and high because the blue groups have now gone from low to high, which is the priority. And the status is looking for any colored group that is red, yellow, orange or green. So it's reading. And then if we move it over to red, you can see a priority is gone because it's no longer in a blue group, but it has been red. So it's complete. Again, because of the flexibility in the canvas, being able to drag books around, it's 
far easier to just click with my mouse and drag than it is to click a, a drop down menu or something like that that you would do in another tool. That's just my preference. And as you can imagine, I've done the exact same thing for media. So this could be films, movies, series. Uh, I've just put in some random films in here. So we've got Frozen 2013 that currently I need to add. So we'll come over here, add it. Frozen 2013, now I've added it, I can then move it over here. So it's a, an individual, so you can have these groups as anything you want. This is gonna be an individual film. This could be for the family to watch, uh, high priority. So it's disappeared from the group and it's ready to go. There are lots of different ways to mind map and there is not really a wrong way that's just more effective or less effective. And for me, when I'm mind mapping inside of broad concepts and abstract concepts of research, doing the small notes doesn't help me. So what I've done here is I've got a research mind map and I've got a group which is a very broad overview. So psychology, obviously there's loads of things inside of psychology, philosophy, and then behavior. So these are behavioral sciences, philosophy sciences, and inside of the group, I then have an area or a topic or a concept. So I've opened up the Gestalt concept, which is inside of psychology. And when I come into the file, it's automatically added psychology to the research field because that's the group it's in. If I was to move it down to behavior, you can see this uh, property will change. So it's now in behavior and the related research field has also changed. If I put it back into psychology, the research field will go back to psychology, but you can see it's in ecological dynamics. And the reason it's adding that is because this ecological dynamics is connected to the group that Gestalt is in. And if I was to go to ecological dynamics, you can see the related research field is Gestalt because these two have a relation here in between a card and the group. So it's a related research field. And then you can also see Gestalt psychology is related to inactivism philosophy. And you can see that in the connected field over here, which is an activism. By clicking on the metadata icon and then going into the settings of these fields, you can see you can actually be very specific and look for specific colors, any color you want. Look for the direction of the arrows, whether it's incoming or outgoing. Look for the edges that the connections are to, whether it's to the right, left, top, down, or two of them, bottom of them, any of those colors. And you can even look for data view queries in there if you really wanted to go ham, but I don't bother with that. So this research mind map, allows me to be far more flexible with the connections between different concepts and topics, which are then put into the file. So when I'm working inside of the research file, I can remember what areas might be related rather than just adding a specific link. Because if I was to have a link like this, one, I have to make it manually, and two, if I do change anything inside of this, it automatically updates. Whereas in, inside the file, I'd have to take it out or I need to add some context and that's just a friction point I don't want to deal with, so I use the canvas. Moving over to an article, a writing, or a book dashboard, this is how I plan out some of the longer video essays or longer articles that I write. I've recently started writing on Substack rather than just inside of my Obsidian, so you can actually see what I'm writing rather than having to look around my published site, and this is how I plan them all out with all of the different parts that go into it. If you have a look over to the left, you can see this is a long form project file, and the way that I do it personally is I have the sections, so introduction, main body, and takeaways as overview files, which you can see at the top of the canvas here. And inside of these files is where I'll add notes about certain sections. So maybe a character limit or make sure to include certain elements for the lit review or inside of results, maybe there's a method uh, of collecting results or presenting results that I want to use in a certain article. So I'll add any notes as an overview note inside of this top part. Moving to the right, I then have a couple of data view queries which are looking for the chapters, the actual written chapters, which are abstract, literature review, methods, results, discussion, and conclusion and I can see which part they're in. And this query on the left is saying to add. So I need to add these two chapters inside of my project board, whereas these four have already been added. You can see with the status and a priority, which as you will imagine, are because of the groups these cards are in. So this is high and research, that's the abstract. We zoom back in, abstract is high and research. So priority and status, we have priority high, medium, and low, and then status at the moment, it's first draft research, first edit, second draft, but there could be as many or as few as you want. But for clarity in my overview, I also want to know, well, what order these chapters are going in. Yes, I can see it at the side, but sometimes I want to see it inside of the actual project board. And I can see here, this arrow is going into the literature review. So the abstract then goes to 
the literature review. And you can see that relation actually inside the data view query because inside of the literature review, it says before that there is the abstract and the abstract after that there is the literature review. So the relationship of the chapters is actually shown inside of the file. So when I'm writing inside of my literature review, I can see at the top what chapters before this are oh, the abstract. So if I do go granular with the chapters and these aren't as broad chapters as just literature review, maybe it's a certain topic, a certain method, a certain scientific review or theory that I'm looking at, I know what theory came before it and what method or theory came after it. And again, this all happens inside of the canvas. So if I want this literature review to go to the discussion, you can see that relation is going to be added inside of the query. So you can now see literature review after that is the discussion and in the discussion before that is the literature review. And then we come to the more traditional use for canvas, which is mind mapping. And you can see here the way I do my mind mapping and spreading out of ideas is I have a purple card always, which is a key. Sometimes the key is the same, other times the key is different. It depends on what sources and what topics and concepts I'm looking at. But for this example, anything in red, it's a topic, blue, key term, yellow, research, orange question, and claim is green. I personally leave a link to a video or a link to a source, but you could bring it in if you wanted to and have the video or the image play inside of the canvas. To me, that's too cluttered. And that is research specific because it's a source. And this is research specific because apparently, according to Eric, who was the person that did this video, there is lots of different research. So maybe I want to have a look at the different research that's been proposed. But the learning styles is the main topic of this mind map. The first question I had is, do they exist? That's then explored inside of the source, goes down to memory strategy, which actually relates directly to what was being spoken about as a key term for VARC. So these four things relate to VARC and these four things have behaviors all grouped together. You can see there's a group which feed into memory strategy. So how are you going to learn learning styles through behaviors? These behaviors are from the VARC framework and the memory strategy leads to no significant difference from the science. Again, that's related to this source. That's what the source said. Actually, there's no significant difference. And there are other sources as well, which I would want to explore but these all seem to converge into what's called a modal preference. So learning styles as a framework isn't quite accurate enough. So modal preferences is really true. And that's a claim. The claim is learning styles is really a modal preference for learning. And if I right click on the line and follow connection, you can see it's going to the multimodal approaches, which is linked to learning topic, another claim and multiple ways to explain the same thing. Again, another claim where all of this actually comes in handy is once I've found the claims and I've isolated what's going on, I've got some questions. I would then want to relate the questions to actual research files which you can see because this is a demonstration vault, the research files are empty, that this question is directly related to the source, which actually is connected to these three claims. What about extended or embodied cognition? Well, that relates to an activism and other research files I have in my own vault, which is where I can then relate an activism as a research topic to the learning styles concept. And in a similar sense, behaviors. Wait, behaviors is a group, and that's also a group inside of my research mind map, which if we look into the ecological dynamics research file, you can see there's the research field, it's behavior. So these four behaviors must be related to ecological dynamics in some way. So I've added the research file. So the colors and the key make it easier to come in and know exactly where I need to go. But linking the research files actually gives me actionable points to go off and go to explore and do more learning. These are just a few examples, but this is why I think the canvas is much more useful and versatile than the graph view. And I'd be curious to see how you're using the canvas core plugin, if you are at all, inside of the comments section below.